Okay, so this is going to be an assignment for our MAT 110 Photoshop class. And what we are going to do is we're going to take a product and basically make it print ready. So as you see right here, we have a pair of tennis shoes in front of us. Uh, and you can see that these are unclipped. One of the steps and the most important step we're about to get into requires using the pen tool. And if you haven't used the pen tool before, uh, it can be a little tricky but it is, in my opinion, the most effective way to get the best clip possible. And what that means is we need to remove these shoes from this background. In fact, we need to do a couple things. But first, we need to remove these from this background. But one thing we'll take into note here is these reflections and shadows. Now, one thing that makes a clipped out item look very fake and sort of pasted is when it doesn't have reflections or shadows because they've been clipped off. And to clarify, the term clipping basically means removing this product from this photo. Uh, so we need to clip it out of here and we're gonna use the pen tool. Um, there are other methods of clipping, but none of them are quite as effective as the pen tool. The pen tool might not always be the best tool for the job, but in this case where spending a little bit longer to do a better job, is worth it, uh, the pen tool is the tool for the job. So let's go ahead and hop in here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a path. Now a clipping path, or a, excuse me, a path, is essentially going to be an outline around the areas we want to remove from this image. So let's go ahead and take a look at our image here. This is a pair of shoes. Um, there's a couple things wrong with this image from a print standpoint. The first thing is, this is not a background that this was ever meant to be on. And what happens uh, when you have these backgrounds is it reflects onto your colors. Um, and what I mean by that is, in fact, you can almost see. If you look right here, uh, we've got a bit of overexposure, and then we kind of have this sort of bluish tint. Um, and so we need to do a few things. And what we're going to do is we are going to clip out our shoes. Um, then we're going to white balance the shoes. So after we're done clipping and white balancing, we're going to come in and probably tackle a little bit of these glue over overruns and basically just try to clean these shoes up a little bit. You can see where the glue is kind of running out a little bit there and anything else that I can quickly get in there and fix. There's not really too much that I see. Maybe get that little flyaway right there. Uh, but other than that, they look pretty good. And you'll also see they used kind of some, some shallow depth of field in this shot because we're actually blurring out back here. It's not a bad thing, I suppose. It just makes clipping a little bit more tricky because you're not dealing with a sharp line. It tends to get softer and blurrier. But anyways, let's go ahead and get in and clip this thing. Now, one thing I always like to do when I'm uh, working with any type of image is duplicate it just in case something goes wrong. So first step I'm going to do is right click on it and choose the duplicate layer. Once I've created the duplicate, then I'm going to basically get right into clipping. So this is the pen tool right here. The, uh, the key command for it is P. And essentially, we want to clip out the shoe, especially along the top here. And then as we get down to here, we want to really kind of take a good look at some of these reflections and shadows and consider keeping those. Uh, we'll definitely blend them with the ba whatever background we put these shoes on, but uh, we want a little bit of shadow and reflection. So I'm going to start back here, and when I'm clipping, I prefer to be zoomed in. If you look down in this lower left-hand corner right now, you'll see we're at 33%. Okay, this is a large image. It's probably 4,000 by 2,000 pixels, uh, which means I can zoom in quite a bit. Right here, I'm at 100%. Now, that would probably be okay for me to get working. Uh, but I wouldn't even mind going one more. Uh, take it up to 200%. Because that really makes getting these lines perfect a lot easier. So I'm just gonna put my point down here. Now, if you're new to the clipping tool, this is kinda how it works. Um, you can create straight lines by just clicking. And it will connect the line, right? But that's not really where the power of the pen tool lies. I'm hitting Command Z to undo that. The power of the pen tool lies in its ability to follow curvature and allow you to quickly and easily match curves um, on your image. Because as you see here, we've got tons of them. 
And if we were to try to do this all with straight lines, we would have to do these little tiny incremental lines and we'd be here all week. Uh, so instead, what I like to do is I'll put the mouse, and it's also important to know where you put your mouse and where you put your pen tool. If I put it right here, I wouldn't get the best results. But if I put it up here, watch how the pen tool handles curves. If I click here, it's gonna give me a straight line. But if I pull the pen tool in the direction of the shoe, I'm getting what are called Bezier handles. And these handles allow me to match this to the existing curve. So here's a spot where I've got a really tight little round corner here, so I'm gonna zoom in. And again, what I tend to do is I tend to go about the same distance away and essentially get what would be about a 45 degree line. But once I pull on it, it will match that curve pretty well. And I'm just gonna come up here and while you're going, you can just, uh, now I'm using the space bar to allow me to move around the image. Notice that when I hit the space bar, my pen tool turns into a hand tool. So I generally do my clipping with one hand on the mouse and one hand on the space bar because I'm constantly needing to move around. Now you can see this sort of gray, this is chromatic aberration we're looking at right here. And uh, it's not pretty. In fact, it's, it's really bad. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and clip it off so it won't be an issue. And so what that means is I'm gonna come right about here where it kind of bulges out the most. I'm gonna put my mouse and I am going to click and drag and notice those Bezier handles. And I'm noticing that I'm coming away a little bit from the bottom here, which means to me that I probably wanna go in just a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna put one more point right there and then come do the same thing. And now I feel like I'm getting much better results. And I'm just going to click and pull in the direction of the line. And that's essentially how this tool works. Um, and once you get into the habit of doing that, it becomes pretty easy as someone who uses After Effects and does lots of masking. Uh, we use the pen tool for everything. So mastering this tool in Photoshop is something that you can quickly carry over into After Effects, Adobe Premiere. Um, the pen tool is obviously a big part of it. So in this case, all I'm probably going to keep is just, I'm gonna follow this little dark area out here and probably just go right out to the end here because their flash washed out all of this so you really don't see any reflection. So I'm gonna come in here and just kind of go wide like that. Now again, you can see there's a thin line right there but I just don't think that's worth saving. So I'm gonna come right up over here and get back to the shoe. And I'll probably feather this so it'll blend into the background. I'm planning on putting these on white. And so I'll go ahead and finish my clip. Must have hit the wrong button there at some point and get back to my pen tool. Now, what we're doing with this pen tool is we are, I'm gonna keep that shadow, we are creating a path. Once we've done this, once we've clipped out the item, uh, we want to tell it to enable this path and finish the clipping process, meaning remove the background. So first thing I wanna do is turn off the bottom layer because if I remove the background, the bottom layer's background will show through. Then I wanna go over to, right now we're on our layers panel, I wanna go over to our paths panel. 
And notice by default, it's created a work path. Um, and it doesn't create a path until you close this shape. So I can't create sort of a half circle uh, without closing it to get a path that I can work with. A uh, work path is sort of a temporary path that it creates, but if you want to save it, you can simply double click on it and call it shoe clip or shoe path or whatever you like. Uh, I'm gonna click okay. And now I have a more permanent path. Now, to remove the shoes from the background, uh, I will come down and introduce you to the marching ants. So we're still in the paths layer. We've simply clicked on the work path to turn it into a, a, um, a path. And now we're gonna come down to the marching ants, which is the dotted circle. Now, if I select this, it, you can see it says load path as selection. So I'll go ahead and do that. And now you can see that my pat my shoes have gone from being uh, my path has gone from being points and bezier to what we call marching ants. So now that I've done that, I can go back and simply hit Command C and Command V and paste that selection onto a new layer. Now it doesn't look any different because the background is showing through, but if I turn the background off, you can now see we have something similar to what we had up here. But it's pretty easy to see the color difference, right? So this is what we're gonna do. This is the fun part. This is what we call professional white balancing. Um, and what I need to do to do this is I need to duplicate this. What I need to do right now is create a RGB version and a grayscale version. And the grayscale is gonna be responsible for all the black and all the white and the RGB version will be responsible for all the color. And once we blend them together, we'll, uh, we'll uh, flatten them into one image. So to do that, I need to select this layer. I'm gonna hit Command A to select this entire layer. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it. And then I'm gonna go File, New. And that will create a new document. Now you can see I have basically saved this image to my clipboard it's defaulting to the size of the image. So I'm gonna click Create. And I'm gonna hit Command V and paste those in here. So now notice that it appears that it's put it over a white background. And if it did, we'd be out of luck. But the fact is there's just a default background in here, which I'm gonna turn off. And now I am going to switch these from being RGB mode to being grayscale mode. So I'm going to go image, mode, grayscale. And it will say changing modes can affect the appearance of layers. Merge layers before changing modes? No, don't merge. Discard color information? Yes, discard. There we go. And now our whites are 100% white and our blacks are 100% uh, black and uh, we don't have any issues with color fringing. Notice all that green is gone, but we've also lost all the color of the shoes. Notice our, our, our background and our reflections looking a lot nicer as well. Um, so now we need to blend these back in with these. Not with those, with these. Not with those, with these. <laughs> with these. And so that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna go ahead and grab this image, hit Command A to select all of it, Command C to copy it, and we're gonna go back to our clipped shoe image, the first one, the this one right here, and we're gonna hit Command V. And we've essentially pasted them over, but it's not quite perfect, so we need to nudge it back into place. Um, and we might opt to drop the opacity on these as well. So we're gonna use the V key, and use the arrows. So I hit V for the selection tool, and now I'm gonna to nudge to the right with my arrows, and then I'm gonna nudge down. And I'm just looking at little points like this, anything I can find, because these really need to be right on top of the other shoe. So now that I've got them roughly laid out, I'm gonna lower the opacity and see if I see any weird sort of blurring because when you have something just a couple pixels off, you see 
some weirdness. There we go. Okay, so I can see a little double line right there. If I zoom in, so while it looked like those were lined up, you can clearly see that they're not. And also be aware that you might have nudged them a little bit too far. So I'm going to come over here and look at this and maybe turn it on and off. You see that little movement right there? That's letting me know that it's not lined up perfectly. So this layer feels like it's nudged a pixel or two too far to the left. So I'm gonna hit the V key and I'm gonna go back. One, two. Now if I click on and off, I'm just looking at this little pixel right here and seeing how much it moves right there. Um, it's pretty darn close. Let's try moving it one more pixel. One more. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, so now that they're aligned and they're right on top of each other, what I'm gonna do here is I am going to, uh, with the black and white layer on top, I'm gonna bump that back to 100% opacity. Because I'm pretty sure that I know where the colors are. But if you're not positive, if you don't sort of memorize, if you haven't memorized where the color is and isn't, you might want to turn this off and take a good look and go, okay, there's blue here, there's blue in the logo, there's blue here, and that's really it. So we'll go ahead and add, an, add a mask. And now I'm gonna hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna shrink my brush down. I'm gonna come over here to my colors and see what I have. And I'm gonna click and drag and notice that I'm not seeing anything. And that is because we need to switch these around so that black is on top. And the easiest way to do that is just hit the X key and they will switch places. And now with black on top, you'll see that removing the color. But I've got a very feathered brush right now. But for the shoe, a feathered brush is a bad thing and will get you into trouble because you're never quite positive how far this feather is uh, extending. So let's go ahead and uh, come up to here and slide our hardness right up to about 100%, maybe 95. Okay, and what I like to do is really just come in here and trace the areas I need to trace first. You don't have to worry about sort of that uh, outside, but you definitely have to worry about that. Now, if you take a little bit of that off, it's not the end of the world, but you can see I've introduced some green right there. And again, attention to detail. So I'm gonna shrink this down and kind of just outline the shoe right now. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key because if you hold down the shift key and stretch, it will uh, connect your points. But you can see what happened was for some reason it clicked off the mask and clicked onto the image and began painting black, which is not what I wanna do. I wanna use the black paint to remove the uh, mask. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the shift key down and just work my way along this shoe here. So I'm using the brackets left and right to make my uh, brush larger or smaller. And let's see, did I get it all? We'll find out in just a second. I gotta get in between those. But if I turn off the background now, I can see. So I missed some stuff. I missed that, I missed that, 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 that. There's some of that feather that I was talking about where you're never exactly quite sure where it's landing. Okay, that's looking pretty good for that shoe. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on, go in and get those thin lines real quick with a small brush and maybe even go a little bit deeper with this brush, shrinking it down. So once you get uh, familiar with this workflow, it becomes rather easy. Um, 
you will get better with the, the pen tool as you go on. It's just one of those things you have to use it. A um, little bit of practice and you'd be amazed at how quickly you'll get up to speed and be clipping with the pen tool. And again, clipping alone, just clipping, not even laying out the ad. Clipping alone is a skill that just about every company that makes products needs. Um, and I can't tell you how many companies I've dealt with that don't even, they aren't even aware of the concept of white balancing. Um, yeah, it's tedious. Yeah, it, you know, takes a little while longer. But I mean, when you're, when you look at an ad and everything that's supposed to be white is yellow or green, you just go, really? Like, <laughs> nobody there had heard of, you know, making sure your whites were white, your blacks were black. I mean, even a poor, even a, you could even desat, you could even mask it out and desaturate it uh, if you're, if you want to do sort of a, a quick way. But uh, it's always amazing to me when I look at ads and the colors are just all wrong. And it's not because they had a bad photographer. It's not because they had a bad art department. It's because they just didn't know that colors, colors bleed into everything. Um, so anyways, there we go. Now, let's see, anything else I missed? It's looking pretty good, pretty solid. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go in and play with the contrast a little bit. Like if I wanted to blacken up the blacks or whiten up the whites, even add a levels filter. Um, by just coming down to the uh, adjustment layers down here. It says create new fill or adjustment layer. I could go up to levels. And I do this a lot just to kind of find out where I am with my whites and my blacks. Notice my whites are going all the way to the edge, which means they're basically uh, overexposing, meaning that we're losing detail, okay? You can see right there we're overexposed might be a little overexposure right in there as well where, where there's just it looks okay because it's white on white but the fact is they've blown out any detail that was there here you can see there's a little crosshatch pattern and by up here that that pattern's gone um, I do like to take my black and just get it right to where the blacks start that way you're sure to have a nice crisp black now that we have the shoes clipped we're gonna go and fix just a couple things there's some pretty noticeable uh, imperfections in this shoe. Um, that white dot right there is bothering me. That white dot right there. That glue line right there that's sticking out. That little flyaway. So I'm going to hit S. Actually, I'm going to click onto the layer. I'm going to hit S for the stamp tool. I'm going to shrink it down using the bracket keys right underneath the plus and minus. And I'm going to hold down Option to sample the shoe. This is on the black and white layer. Obviously, I want to be on the color layer. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the color layer and select that layer. Um, there we go. And I'm gonna soften up my brush as well. Well, for this, I'm gonna go ahead and do this because this is gonna require a soft brush, but I want a hard brush for the glue because I want a nice crisp line going over the, uh, the sole. So we'll go ahead and hit Option. I'm just gonna click right about there and just carefully work my way down over that glue. go ahead and select both of these right click and choose uh, merge layers and once I've done that 
I can get rid of this layer by just dragging it down to the trash if I want. Um, I can, again, that background layer, I'll just leave it there. Um, turn my levels filter on. I can go ahead and flatten that as well, merge those. And now I'm feeling pretty good. Now, the last thing I want to do now, I'm going to go ahead and use an eraser now. Since my, since my uh, mask got sort of disappeared in the flattening process, I'm going to go ahead and just take an eraser, set it to maximum softness, and just come in here and not even, I like, kind of get away from it and just see how I'm not even on the white. I'm kind of back a little bit, but it's extending as it does. And that way, just by doing this, Whatever layer I blend this with, we should get a really good result. Um, in fact, if I were to just create a flat, a white layer underneath this right now, you would probably see that without even setting it to any kind of blend mode or playing with opacity, we would get a pretty nice mix. So if I come up here with the paint bucket tool, move this layer underneath, paint it out. Oh, wrong color. Let's try hitting X and getting that white. There we go. So there we go, we have a uh, really clean looking pair of clipped out shoes.